Have you ever heard a friend or a loved one who uses tobacco say they are dying for a smoke? Dying for a smoke is an expression used by smokers on their feeling of the need to light up. But according to scientific research, it also can very aptly describe the result of their smoking habit. Hello, noble viewers, and welcome to today's Healthy Living. In honor of yesterday's celebration of World No Tobacco Day, we will be discussing the hazards of smoking. Tobacco is listed as one of the most serious global health threats by the World Health Organization. Each year, 5.4 million people die from tobacco-related diseases, and according to the World Health Organization's projections, the number of annual deaths due to smoking will increase to more than 8 million by the year 2030 if no effective measures are taken. Statistics show that one-fifth of the world's population, or 1.2 billion people, smoke tobacco. Although in recent years smoking has significantly declined in industrialized countries, a growing number of young people and women are now, unfortunately, joining the ranks of smokers in developing countries. The World Health Organization projects that 500 million present smokers will die from tobacco-induced diseases if the current trend does not stop while the total number of deaths caused by smoking will reach one billion during the 21st century. Medical evidence shows that smoking is responsible for at least 25 diseases, including cardiovascular disease, lung cancer, emphysema, oral cavity cancer, esophageal cancer, stomach cancer, and liver cancer. Sir Richard Petto, world-renowned epidemiologist from the University of Oxford in England, estimates that one-third to one-half of smokers will die of tobacco-related ailments. Scientific research also shows that there are over 4,000 chemical substances in cigarette smoke, hundreds of which are toxic, while more than 60 are cancer-causing. One highly toxic chemical in tobacco is nicotine, a colorless, transparent, oily liquid which causes addiction to smoking. When a person smokes, the nicotine is quickly absorbed into the body through the mouth, nose, and bronchial mucosa, entering the brain in just seven to 10 seconds. Then a series of bodily reactions are triggered. The heart starts to beat faster and the blood pressure increases. At the same time, nicotine also promotes platelet coagulation in the blood. All these changes bring extra pressure to the circulatory system, increasing the risk of future heart attacks, high blood pressure, and strokes. Once smokers' bodies get used to a certain level of nicotine in the blood, they feel uncomfortable when the nicotine concentration declines. Thus, smokers have to continue to smoke to maintain their normal nicotine level. Moreover, the tar in tobacco smoke contains large amounts of toxic cancer-causing substances, such as polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons and phenolic compounds. Long-term smoking leads to a large number of such harmful chemical substances accumulating in a smoker's lungs, bringing biochemical and physical harm to the body, and eventually resulting in lung cancer, emphysema, and other diseases. Research indicates that the incidence of lung cancer among long-term smokers is 10 to 20 times higher than that of people who never smoke. Tobacco smoke also contains carbon monoxide, hydrogen cyanide, free radicals, metals, and radioactive compounds. Carbon monoxide reduces the red blood cell's ability to transport oxygen to the body, thus causing decreases in oxygen and physical strength. Hydrogen cyanide destroys the normal functioning of the lung cleansing system, leading to the accumulation of toxins from tobacco smoke in the lungs, and in turn causing long-term harm to the body. British physiologist Richard Dahl of the University of Oxford in England conducted a 50-year study on 33,439 male physicians in the UK and found that 11 life-threatening cancers, including lung cancer, stomach cancer, esophageal cancer, and pancreatic cancer were closely linked to smoking. 
Participants in the study who smoked more than 25 cigarettes a day had 25 times higher mortality rate from lung cancer than those who did not smoke. As with many other cancers, the risk of dying from lung cancer grew each year as the number of cigarettes smoked increased. Statistics also show that smokers' chances of suffering from coronary heart disease are 3.5 times higher than those of non-smokers. And the heart disease mortality rate among the former is six times higher than among the latter. The incidence of myocardial infarction or heart attack in the former is two to six times higher than in the latter. In addition, 30% to 40% of cardiovascular disease-related deaths are caused by smoking with the mortality rate being proportional to the amount of smoking. In the year 2000 alone, 1,690,000 smokers around the world died from heart disease. Researchers have found that smokers are more likely to experience sudden death from coronary heart disease as compared to non-smokers. Researchers from the Chaim Sheba Medical Center in Tel Hashimer, Israel, followed over 3,000 patients with coronary artery disease for eight years. Their research results indicated that smokers are more than twice as likely to experience sudden death as compared to non-smokers. However, once smokers quit smoking, the increased risk of sudden cardiac-related death virtually disappears. Smoking also weakens the immune system's functioning, increasing the body's susceptibility to respiratory and other infections, as well as slowing down the rate of recovery from illness. The Israeli study also found that levels of antioxidants in smokers' bodies are lower than in non-smokers, meaning the body's ability to repair damaged cells is weakened by smoking. In addition, smoking has been associated with higher levels of chronic inflammation. When we return, we will learn more about the hazards of smoking, as well as a simple technique to help quit smoking. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to Healthy Living here on Supreme Master Television. In commemoration of World No Tobacco Day, which was yesterday, we are discussing the damage to the human body caused by smoking. While tobacco use causes direct harm to smokers' health, the threat of secondhand smoke to others is also a serious public health concern that cannot be ignored. A World Health Organization report notes that each year in the United States alone, 46,000 people die of heart disease and 3,400 of lung cancer due to passive smoke. The threat of secondhand smoke to children and women is greater than to adult males. According to statistics, each year in the United States, passive smoke causes 71,900 cases of premature delivery and 200,000 cases of asthma in children. Recently, John Meeker, a professor at the University of Michigan School of Public Health in the USA, and his research team found that women exposed to secondhand smoke during childhood because of parents who smoke were 80% more likely to have a miscarriage compared with those whose parents did not smoke. Apart from standard cigarettes, the most commonly used type of smoked tobacco, there are many other types of tobacco products such as beedies, which are predominantly smoked in South Asia, cigars, and tobacco smoked with a hookah or water pipe, these forms of tobacco are as dangerous as cigarettes. Since smoking is so addictive, how can people kick the habit? Although his grandfather, R.J. Reynolds, founded the tobacco company that bears his name, Patrick Reynolds travels a different path and has devoted his life to helping people quit the use of tobacco. Mr. Reynolds created the Foundation for a Smoke-Free America in 1989, a U.S.-based organization dedicated to helping keep youth stay away from tobacco products and helping smokers end their habit. For his dedication to improving public health and helping enacting anti-tobacco laws, he is also the recent recipient of the Shining World Hero Award from Supreme Master Ching Hai. Here Mr. Reynolds shares some tips with us on how to stop smoking. 
And the studies show that most people do fail several times at quitting smoking. If you're a smoker out there and you failed to quit smoking before, take comfort in the fact that most people do fail several times before they finally stop successfully. And rather than getting a message that you can't quit, take your past failures as part of the normal journey toward becoming a non-smoker. And second, get into a program. You're reading a book on how to quit smoking, or you're getting some counseling, or you try one of the pharmaceutical remedies like the nicotine replacement, the patch, the gum, and so on. Then your chances go up. Simple breathing is also a method which can help people who want to quit smoking get through difficult times. It's a thing for gaining serenity. It's a very powerful thing and so simple to teach people. So on the count of three, let's do it together. Okay. One, and we're going to inhale and slowly exhale, and I will teach you how to just let all the tension go. And this is how you get through the craving for a cigarette when you're trying to quit smoking. So one, two, three, inhale. Slowly let the air out, let all the air out. Let your chin just go over on your chest. Don't do it while you're driving. Just let your air go. And then one, two, three, inhale. Slowly let the air out, let your chin just kind of drop your chest and let the tension just go out your fingers and toes. One, two, three, inhale. Slowly let the air out, let all the tension just go out your fingers and toes. Now look at me. Notice how you feel. Centered, focused. Now relax. There is power in this. And then in this moment, this urge to smoke has gone down a little bit. That's one thing. You could drink a lot of water, go for a walk, try to avoid coffee, caffeine, or alcohol for the first week you're trying to quit smoking. Those are all boilerplate points, the breathing. It's an ancient yoga technique. Those are all ways for the first few days. But I am equally interested in what happens after the first few days of quitting, of what happens two, three months later? The urge to smoke is going to go less and less and less, and you're going to have less urges to smoke, but I promise you that you will be out with friends or uh, have a very nice time on a vacation, and you will get an out-of-control desire for a cigarette from nowhere. And my message in this moment is, remember, five little words... Hold on for five minutes, and the urge will pass. And do the breathing during those five minutes. And, you know, you're not out of the woods for a year or two years. You will get out-of-control attacks, and when those attacks come, hold on for five minutes. Do your breathing. The five minutes will pass, and this out-of-control desire will be gone. I have made it my life's mission to send the message to young people to not smoke and not start smoking and to empower people who do smoke to quit smoking. And my website has helped a lot of people around the world to stop smoking and help kids avoid smoking. We truly appreciate Mr. Patrick Reynolds' advice on how to stop smoking and for his organization's fine work that has helped to prevent young people from starting this harmful habit. May all governments and individuals alike quickly unite to end tobacco use in society and thus make our world a happier, healthier, and smoke-free place. Thank you for joining us on today's episode of Healthy Living. Please stay with us for science and spirituality after Noteworthy News. We wish you a blessed day, abundant love, and divine light from heaven. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash HL.